Starting off the news this week, ESA and NASA are planning to work closer together in order to more accurately measure polar ice thickness. The joint US-European venture will see ESA's Cryosat-2 satellite raise its orbit slightly, which will mean that it can more efficiently work with NASA's ICESat-2 satellite. Cryosat-2 uses radar to measure the heights of things on the surface, whereas ICESat-2, which orbits at a lower altitude, uses a laser to measure the height of objects on the surface. The laser does not penetrate the snow on top of the ice, however, meaning that the satellite may be measuring snow levels instead, whereas Cryosat-2's radar does penetrate the snow. Next up is a description of a brand new dinosaur, a Triassic sauropodomorph from Switzerland. Name Schleithemia schutzi, the paper describing this dinosaur also reviews other sauropodomorph material from nearby, finding at least three taxa were present in this area of Switzerland. Platiosaurs, a new taxon and a third that isn't named. Schleithemia is a large robust dinosaur that's placed as a derived basal sauropodiform and is possibly even the immediate outgroup to sauropoda itself making this animal the most derived sauropodomorph known from late Triassic Europe. And now over to Ben with the news. <laughs> oh, look at the top of his head! <laughs> Also in the news this week is the publication of a remarkable discovery of two exceptionally preserved specimens of the Middle Triassic ichthyosaur Mixosaurus from Italy, which have revealed the presence of a soft tissue dorsal fin and a dorsal lobe on the caudal fin. These soft tissue structures are of course known to be present in later ichthyosaurs, but the fact that they're also in Triassic ones confirms the previous speculation that these fast swimming adaptations were around at this point. Additionally, this discovery makes Mixosaurus the oldest amniote known to us so far that developed a dorsal fin, and it's not just fins that the fossils preserve. Skin, dermal fibres, stomach contents and possibly even an intestine tract have been found too, making these specimens particularly special. And finally for this week is even more Triassic news, as a paper has described a new early Ornithodiron, Ornithodira being the clade that includes both dinosaurs and pterosaurs. Named Congonaphon kelly, this animal was found in mid to upper Triassic rocks in Madagascar, and is an incredibly small creature, standing just 10 centimetres tall. The classification of this animal near the ancestry of dinosaurs and pterosaurs is highly significant as it allows paleontologists new insight into the early evolution of these iconic groups, and what they've discovered is that early members of this lineage may have been much smaller than previously thought, and that a miniaturization event occurred near the base of the avian stem lineage. The tiny size is also thought to perhaps explain the origin of flight in pterosaurs and the development of fuzzy integument in both clades, as well as implying that the rarity of early ornithodirons may be due to a taphonomic artefact rather than an accurate representation of their evolution. Some really exciting news this week then. Back to Doug in the studio. Thank you, Ben. That's it for this week's Seven Days of Science. I do hope you enjoyed it and feel free to subscribe if you haven't already. As always, we'll see you on Sunday. Right, that's it. Let's, let's go. All right. Yeah. I've got something for you. What? <laughs> oh, that's better. So, what now? Well, I guess we have to go get it back.